Hello there and welcome once again to my little arty corner of YouTube. I'd like to welcome you here. If it's your first time you're most welcome. If you're a returning visitor, thank you for joining me again. Um, and I'd just like this to say this um, huge thanks to everybody who subscribed to my channel, who's liked my videos, who's left lovely comments. I appreciate you all very, very much. I'd also like to ask that if you like what you see, then perhaps you could give a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you haven't already. So with no further ado, I'm going to make a start because I can waffle on way, way too much. So what I thought I'd do today, it's Friday, so it's Fragment Friday. And I thought a fragment I'd take a look at in this, this is the Anamule DNS sketchbook, so draft and sketch. And this page I've actually coloured with Distress Inks and it's done fine. It's perfectly fine. So I've created a border. I'd already drawn lines in pencil um, with a ruler, so they're fairly straight. But I'm going to start with a, well, I'm going to do the square fragment version and see where this kind of idea leads. So start with a square. I'm then going to put four of these in and then I'm going to draw a orb in the middle, which is lovely. It's simple. These work so well in grids, in St. Anglespeak particular, whether it's a very regular organised grid or even in crazy grids. I might do some of those at the bottom just for fun. Um, simple variations because I like to remind myself of what the simple variations can be as well. So I'm going to pop these in. I'm using an 05. Um, it happens to be a Copic SP multi-liner which has waterproof, alcohol ink proof pigment ink in it. So just by putting these extra lines in, it creates something that's different. I'm not going to be adding any black because that's optional. But as soon as you add black to these areas, you create something that looks like there's a lot of depth behind this. Black here can fill patterns in with these. Up these areas in with pattern but today I am just going to use lines to create some variations of these now instead of drawing a line in here let's aura this space here and then pop this orb in the middle so that gives a different feeling straight away to that. And I'll do this shape again. I'll do this. I'm also going to do this. pop an orb in the middle. It's getting a lot more ornate and to help you know solidify the patterns on this I think you know um, you know these areas in it rather than patterns it needs some pattern or some black but I'm going to stick to my my rule today and my restrictions here. Okay let's have a look. Let's make these narrower than the original and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my pencil, excuse my arm going across the screen, I forgot to put my pens all on my right, pencil line like this, was that the way I wanted to do it? Well we're going to do it now because what I'm going to do is I'm going to 
squash. So instead of one orb in the middle, I'm going to squash four in this way. So I'm splitting this up in, in, in essence, but into those shapes. And I think black is needed there to help with that, but I'm not going to do that. This one's a bit off square, but that's fine because it works in exactly the same way. This one, I divided that in a space diagonally. Here I'm going to divide it vertically and horizontally. And that means that I should be able to get four rather plumptious bulbs in. space I created here feels bigger because we're not you know these are triangular whereas these are much more on the square side so it's similar but it's different okay so let's have a look at with these I made these first areas thinner so what about if we make them much bigger That means the area in the middle is so much smaller. Like so. I'm perfect for popping more than one of these arcs in. Which gives a lovely different kind of feeling there. It's getting very busy, which is fine. You know me, if something's a bit too busy, then I'll put, you know, if I'm going to use it as an individual fragment, as a motif in a pattern, I'll put a border around it to make it look like something that perhaps would dangle from a pendant. Um, not always, but I'm known to do things like that. My squares are getting all a bit skew with here. I was hoping to keep this all quite, a, you know, like neat and tidy. I suppose I should have gridded this out with pencil if I wanted to do that. Always an option. But, um, okay. So we've just used sort of like very curved shapes here. What about if we flatten them on the top? So it's much more of a squarish shape here in the centre, rather than completely curved. So that's a slightly different feeling. I suppose, I suppose if I'm going to do flattening them, I need to point them a bit more. Getting towards a triangle, but not quite. And that gives a different shape. Again, simple variations. I like that one on the end, actually. I like the um, the points it creates, how it enhances those and creates something that's a bit more star-shaped. Because we're getting, you know, um, the straighter edges give more space there rather than the curved ones. So I quite like these. Yeah, I know they're disappearing off the screen because I'm adjusting the angle at which I'm drawing. Okay, so I've done a fair few squares there, all based on one. The The one that I saw to start with was a triangular fragment, so I'm going to pop that in. But I am not going to draw all of these variations in a triangle because every single one of these will work in a triangle in one way or another. I'm not sure about these. Let's have, shall we have a look and see if we can split that space up or how to split that space up to give, to pop a couple more orbs in. So I'm making these quite small. How do we split this space up? If I put a dot in the middle, we can do lines like this, or we can do lines this way. I'm going to do them in this kind of way because it gives me a lot more space there. So I don't know if you can see. If I pop the pencil line in a bit deeper, you can see what I've done there. So I'm going to pop the 
orbs in here like so so we get three in there i think if i'd done it from the corner to the um yeah the corner to the middle would have had quite small shapes let me have a look because that could be interesting as well it depends how you want to squash those circles or orbs in so with this one i went from the sides to the middle if i put that dot in the middle i'm now going to go from the top to the middle you know the the points to the middle rather than the sides to the middle and then we've got this lovely big shape here to squish to have a squish of orbs because that is the collective noun for a squish of orbs so that one works nicely as well because this shape is much more well could have made those a lot more you know following that shape i suppose extending the edge but it's distinctly different to this there's a there's a variation here but this one's quite a bit more okay so there's these what about a circle well with circles we have lots of options as to what to do so we can put four of these edges in you know the um, curves around the edge or we can put three in you could put five in or six what i would do though for more than a couple for me is i'm going to think about putting five in so I'm just going to put little pencil lines to help me divide this up into five fairly evenly. This one is bigger than the others, the one on the bottom. Um, I could tell that because it took me a bigger movement of my arm. But that gives a different feel again. So that actually looks more like a star inside a circle, doesn't it? With a circle inside. And you could... <coughs> Excuse me. I put five there, so I could make the fragment big enough. We can nest them and keep going. You can do the same with these because you could. We could put um if I take the square here. go back to the square now I've done this one I shall make these quite shallow that's the word I'm looking for so I can get a lovely big orb in the middle make these fairly shallow and then get another big orb in the middle and then again and so on ever decreasing until you can draw no more you must probably could get another one in there if i used a finer pen so that's quite fun I, that's a nice variation i haven't come across before no doubt somebody has done it it's just i haven't come across it, it doesn't mean i've invented it in fact it's quite a common pattern in um mandalas and things like that so it's just that i've never used it as a fragment excuse me while i take a drink still got some mocha it's a, it's a mocha morning i have to say that the sun is shining when i woke up the clouds are coming over a bit but i've had a lovely dose of sunshine today so um even early you know them for a short time it just lifts my spirits lifts my energy i also had a good night's sleep which is even better okie dokes so we've done triangles circles squares in circles what else um, Eastern mandalas, traditional mandalas. Thinking about other shapes that I like. Um, let's take a teardrop shape. I 
teardrops are basically triangular, I think. I always think of them more as triangles. And of course, the other triangular shape that I particularly like is this one, the, the ginkgo leaf kind of shape. And that works in an interesting way. And you can have the triangle that has got four sides that curve outwards. And that one, which I was probably off the screen. No, I'm not. Still there. Works quite nicely as well. Uh, I'm trying to think. Um, let's have a, a hexagon at work. We've done, we've done like a pentagon there, I suppose. Slightly different, you know. Um, They're all slightly different. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to draw in a grid. I'm going to use my pencil. In fact, I must probably can take it all the way to the edge. And I'll erase that first pencil line I drew. Sorry for the arm flitting across the screen. I really do need to learn to put everything to the right side of me. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a, a grid. I'm going to start with the vertical lines. And then I'm going to get to the middle and then I'm going to go a bit on the crazy side, I think. So that'll do. I'm going to put a border there. And then these ones are going to be the ones that I'm going to create in a crazy manner. And just let the lines go as they need to in whatever direction they want to. Not overthinking it, not trying to create a grid of any particular size or shape. I just know I just want something like that. That'll work. So you can structure this because you can actually create curved grids like um, circular and so on. This one I want a bit more on the regular side. So I'm trying to get them roughly all square shapes. Bottom it's going to be a bit smaller on this, you know, because this one gets a bit wider at the bottom and so on, but it'll work. Okay, so which one did I particularly like? Oh. Um, I liked this one on the end, didn't I? Yeah. So let's have a look at that one in a regular grid. So here's a case of I'm going to put a number of them in. I think I'll do groups of four because so I'll get quite a few of the variants in a grid then and I am working with a square grid and I'm not going to try and work out a triangle this morning so it was this one that I particularly liked when you put it together you get all of these other interesting shapes appearing, the so-called meta shapes. So these in the middle. And it's how we want to bring those shapes out and do something with them. So I think that's quite interesting. Okay. Actually, I can have grids of four, four fours with a, a, a big one in the middle where I could do something, I suppose. Let's have a look at this one. So I will... I think I'll do another one of these here. That was a big triangle, yellow shape one on the top there, but it's fine. It's the variations in the sizes disappear in the overall pattern. It's surprising how your eye and brain are quite forgiving of those slight imperfections. I like these leaf shapes that have appeared. I do. I have to say that here. Okay. I wanted to look at this one, I think, as well. 
So we're going to start changing. the shapes somewhat. So I'm giving these the curvier treatments and you can see that it doesn't feel out of place next to this one. Yes, the leaf shape here is slightly different, but it's gradually changing one to another. Um, morphing, metamorphosis. If you know um, Escher's work, who is one of my favourite artists, I think he's one of most people's favourite artists. He was a mathematician and his work is so detailed and beautiful, but he worked with the illusion of dimension and space and twisting things, impossible, things that you couldn't make in reality, but you can create two-dimensionally on paper. And one of the things he did were tessellations that morphed from one thing to another, and he called them metamorphoses which is what metamorphosis is. It's changing gradually from one thing to another. It's a change. And so this is what is kind of happening here because I could put circles here, but I am going to, um, if I'd thought about it, the step I could have done here would be to add one of these shapes like this. But perhaps if I do this, and pop these in here, then I can do that metamorphosis to this. So we're gradually changing from one thing to the next, from, you know, uh, across these rows. And so down here, if I do another one of these I suppose I say I suppose and um, here there's more triangular shapes on the outside edge they're still pretty curved you could do them actually quite pointy if you wanted to I like curves so here I can then go and do that kind of thing as I've done here yeah, I tried to draw it all in one go and I messed up a little bit but here so we've changed from this to this and then this change into that or to anything else so that's quite nice and then what I'll do here as well so I'm gonna do some more of these because I'm not trying to create a regular pattern here I'm just trying to see how things would work out is I'm going to start to do these, this kind of thing here, but I'm putting them into the previous square so that it feels that we've got a continuity of pattern and shape, because one of these on its own would look a bit awkward, whereas here we're giving that feeling that they might be changing one into another. And with this one, I think I'm going to keep this one like this. But here with this one I'm going to go back to this. Actually I should have done that but it doesn't matter. So a lot of fun there. So I've got a couple more rows but I'm not going to do any more there and now. Let's have a look over here at this crazy crazy grid and I think I think I'm going to do this one in this grid this particular one but I'm going to keep the, the fragment the same. in each section. So it's by warping that grid, it's going to warp these, these fragments and change it. And you're going to have to alter the 
the size of all of these. Look at that. Actually, I may just start with the original one and just see how that's working out. And that is one humongous grid. I do tend to work much bigger, you know. Um, this is bigger than a Zentangle tile, one of the original tiles, which is three and a half inches by three and a half inches, I think. Whereas here, we're working on a much bigger scale. But that gives the space to work with other things. And I like it for adding colour and shadow. I think as I get older or more experienced, I'm getting bolder with drawings and shapes, perhaps. Don't know. It may be the influence of designing colouring books, um, colouring pages, colouring templates, because you've got to leave enough space there for people to colour. So I'm going to do all of these as far as I can here because I find it awkward to draw right on the edge of the paper. So I want to turn my book. So I thought rather than rather than turn it all in one go or keep turning it, I'd just turn it as little as often. Um, move it up a bit as well so it's better in shots there we go it's a bit like watching paint dry i had thought to do this as a stop motion animation i completely forgot about it as i got engrossed in all of this because i think that would be fun to look at i've done them oops Just for a bit of fun and a bit of variation, but not today, it seems. <laughs> not unless I decide to do something similar. Perhaps I'll keep that sketchbook Saturdays. Right, need to get one there. It's really awkward when you've got such a thick depth of paper, because this is, I don't know, about an inch thick, that um, it doesn't lay flat on the on my desk, on my table, so it becomes awkward. To draw on, because I like to rest my hand on the paper. When you get to the edge of the book, there's no paper left to rest your hand on. Right, nearly done. I thought I'd pop all of these in first before I do anything else. So that is Bales, I think. I think this is Bales, isn't it? It's the fragment for Bales. So that's one crazy grid. So do I want, I think I might, I think I'm going to, I think I am going to go with these because I think it could be fun and interesting. I want to try to leave enough space here that if I decide to add colour I can do that in these sections. The chances I'm going to. Yesterday afternoon after I finished the video I made which may or may not be, you know, one of those ones that people find really interesting because while well, I was colouring and talking about my wound and things like that. So, um, which is fine. Sometimes, you know, I have to find things out and work out what I share and what I don't share while the video was uploading and uh, and what have you, I thought, ooh, I carried on working with the graphite pencils and I went, ooh, I 
wonder what would happen if I used watercolour paints. So I got out my, my palette of um, the Magello Gold because they've got such lovely, I mean, all my watercolour palettes that I've got, sets of watercolours, have got lovely rusty colours in them and lovely indigos and so on. My favourite kinds of, you know, colours to add. And so I um, thought, let's have a look and see if I can get how watercolours will react with this paper that is not designed for using watercolours on. It's not watercolour paper, you can't work at it and layer it up. But I do very simple, not very wet washes. I'm um, The way I like to work with watercolour is in a very controlled manner, which is goes against what the um, what the medium is all about, I suppose. But different people use media, you know, it's finding out how different media work for you, how you like to work with them. And I think when people say, oh, this is the correct way, this is how you should, it means this is how I work with it and this is, these are how I do things. And there's, there's benefit in trying these things out because you never know the way that somebody works may be what's right for you. And I, I often think that that's where I get so confused about things and get so frustrated with myself because I find it hard to accept that the way that I do things is as valid as the way anybody else does things. And you know what I've done, don't you? I've got some squares around some of these and others I've forgotten to put the squares in and I've just got the orbs in there. That's fine. I can live with that, believe it or not. And what I'm going to do at the bottom here with some of the bigger ones, I'm going to put these in as if that the orbs have um, broken out of those squares and in fact I've just popped some in this one that's got the square, you know, I say the square, the aura in it. So have a bit of fun. It's not like, I bet, I bet you all noticed that. I bet you all did. Oh my gosh, does she realise she's completely forgotten to do this? Yeah, I had. I was so engrossed in talking. I've forgotten about what I was doing. So one crazy pattern. But it's, it's possible to add things, and this really is a crazy one, because I'm not going to get those shapes in every single one, because there's just not the space for it. So this truly is crazy because it's a mixture of variations and variants. These, they look like hot dog sausages, almost in a strange hot dog bun, don't they? It's gone mad. The world's gone mad here. It really has. It's crazy. Um, absolute, absolutely crazy here. There we are. So, so to, to go back to it is that I was using watercolour yesterday and I absolutely loved using them and I'll show you very quickly because you saw this yesterday you can see it's coming along and I bet you can't tell where I've used watercolour and where I've used graphite tints or um, charcoal some of the charcoal have gone over I did go over the charcoal tint charcoal here with um, watercolour I've left the charcoal there and they just work well together. There's this lovely muted quality to the colours, which is a lot to do with the colour of the um, paper. But um, I've got variations in blues and indigos and so on going on there. And I can't tell you. I can tell you I know this bit here is mostly watercolour, as is some of this bit. But other than that, there's some bits over here that are some bits at the top. But otherwise... I can't work out which is watercolour and which isn't, which is most probably a very good thing. There's some here that needs some, this would be watercolour because it's one, one even colour. 
um, which needs a bit of working on. Okay, so let's have a look at these. And I am going to, I am going to use, let me have a look, what colour's that? I've got dark indigo, which I think dark indigo would be quite nice because we've got quite a rusty background. And let me see if I can spot, there we go. There's my autumn brown. And I've got a meadow there. And I've also got, do I have the port? No, most probably not today. I've got aubergine. I know in this set over here, I don't think I've got juniper in this set. Oh, I do. So we'll have juniper as well, rather than aubergine. There we go. Those should be fine. So let's have a look. Oh, brush water. And let's just add some colour here and see how we get on. So I've got a nice finish brush. I've got some tissue here so I can just um, wipe some of the water off. Okay, um, I'll start with dark indigo and I'll start on the fragments. I'm going to put shadow along the bottom of these shapes and in the corner. These shapes being these um, half rice shapes, these half leaf shapes at the edge because I'll want to um, keep the top light, the bottoms in darkness, as if the bottoms here are in shadow and the top is not in shadow. Because I've got distress inks, I'm going to have to wet all of that section, otherwise I'm going to get some strange lines. And um, these colours may work a bit differently with distress ink. But I'm fine with that, to be honest, because it's an experiment for me as well to see how distress inks work on this um, this paper. They do reactivate with just a hint of water, but that does give that kind of um, shadowing going on there. This one, I'm going to do these inner ones with. Autumn brown. Again. They don't activate as easily on the top of distress inks, I do have to say that. But they do activate, and I need a bit more water than I was using over here. So that really has activated quite a bit. It's working out how, oh gosh, it's like. <laughs> I, Angela, that one wasn't dry. No, I know. There's no hope for me. You do realise that, don't you? Right, let's put some indigo in the base here and um, have it arcing in the base in the corner and have it spreading out a little bit but leaving a highlight. Um, at the at the top. That's what I want. Darker at the bottoms, but a little bit towards the top. So we've got that going on here. Like so. I'll let that one dry. Um, I like this colour so much. It tones in really beautifully with the the colours I chose for Distress Ink. On, on the page of Distress Inks I used were Rusty Hinge and Aged Mahogany, just two. Um, and I did use a stencil, um, one stencil, but the stencil had a couple of different patterns on. One was kind of um, like uh, funny lines with um, broken lines, you know, you know, bands in it. The other one was um, like random sized overly dots and um, I quite liked that so for these in the middle I think I'm going to pop shadow towards the bottom of them I'm going to use indigo on them all I'm not going to do all of my fragments I'll be here for a month of Sundays it takes me forever to do these and you will hear me um, dipping my brush into the water regularly and I never leave my brush in water. 
I never put it down and leave it in there. Between, if I need to put it down and work with a different medium or a different size brush, I always take it out of the water and put it down. You leave it in the water, you run the risk of squished bristles. And then nobody likes misshapen bristles. Well, I don't. So there's there's those. And you can see the difference that just simple colour adds. And you could, you know, one colour will work as, um, you know, for, for shading. Okay, let's have a look at these. Um, I've got this meadow, which is a greeny colour, because I thought I'm going to work with these as if they're leaves. So let's have a look and see how that works with this particular section of these patterns. I'm not going to do them all. I'm just going to start with some just to see how they go. So that'll do fine there. I will do that one because I can. And let's have a look at those and see how these work. Again, I'm just putting the darkest colour in the corners. I'm just letting it fade out towards the centre. I don't want um, one colour along here. I want to keep those corners dark. So the sun's back out again and it's lovely. I'm working early enough today that it's not shining directly all over my work here. But it won't be long before it is, so the sun moves around towards the south. And if you can hear any beeping and noise in the background, then it's um, it's the um, it's the weekly recycling pickup from our local authority, our council here, and they come on a Friday. And so the, the lorries beep as they reverse and the chaps are very jolly and shout a lot and laugh a lot and you know communicate with each other over the noise but it's fine it's an important thing so I did remember to put my recycling out this week last week I think was it last week yeah, our recycling was delayed by a day because, it, oh gosh, it was only last week we had those stupidly high winds and that storm. God oh, blimey. I think it was last week. See, I've got no recollection of time at all. Because our deliver bin deliveries, no, it wasn't last week. Yeah, last week it was. Was it? Do you know, I'm not really entirely sure. It's crazy. It's all back to normal now, which days they pick the recycling up and our household waste once a fortnight. And um, It's amazing how the lines, even though we've got lines in the middle of these, they almost become unimportant. And yet this is this fragment here, this pattern here is, well, it's kind of this one, it's this one up in the corner, but the same kind of thing. And yet it looks completely, you know, you've taken away those clear edges and they've become these petal shapes. They'd be fun, fun to do as um, flowers. So I am going to, just in one, I'm going to put some indigo in the corners and just tease this out a little bit. Keeping it dark in the corner, but Still dark up around the orb in the middle. Let's give that 
feeling of depth. It's more dramatic if you use black, but I've decided to use some graphite tint pencils today. So perhaps if I do one next door as well, I still am going to do one. I'll do a couple so you can see the difference that just something like that makes. Yeah, I'm fussing around with colour. So I quite like that. That is really quite lovely actually. And then I got juniper out, but I haven't used the juniper colour. But I will here instead of the autumn brown, because I think this purpley pink, the pinky purple colour, will work nicely here with these two colours. Again, I'm trying to keep the darkest colour towards the base of this orb shape, blending it out a little bit around the edges so I haven't got really harsh edges. But I know if I need to lighten anywhere, that's the thing about watercolours, is that if I need to lighten anywhere, once it's dry, I can always add some water and pick up some excess um, colour from it with a towel or with, you know, tissue or whatever, or cloth, to do that. So there's that one, which that brings out those shapes. These ones, I can do the same. I can bring out these shapes with colour. So I'll do a couple. You do have to watch where you're going with these because the crazy ones, it's not so easy to see that pattern at times. Especially with this one because I've got these extra bits in this particular pattern here. So the, so I've got the aura border around the um, you know, inside here, but let's have a look. My temptation is that I, you know, I think of as I'm doing this, or oh, wouldn't it be fun if I alternated the colours from one to the next, so, and that would help to bring out perhaps the original fragments, so instead of doing both of these in um, this autumn brown, autumn brown on one side, I don't know, indigo on the other, and then you get a diamond, you know, a, a diagonal pattern of the autumn brown and then the blue and so on. Um, that could be interesting and fun. So you create another kind of pattern going on with colour. And of course that can be done then with, I am putting any autumn brown on that corner there. So I am now and just teasing it out. I do find with the graphite tint you do need to scrub around a little bit with it but don't be too harsh if you use these with your brush and wreck your brush it's more a back and forth so that you can activate the the color within it can take it depends what paper you're working on this one seem you know things seem to sink into the, the fibers of the paper so it's a bit harder to activate than it would be say on mixed media paper or watercolor paper which is interesting. All my sketchbooks, because most of my sketchbooks, apart from this one, are um, all media paper. So I like the sea white ones. And so they're sized, um, which means they've got a finish added to them that allows them to accept wet media. 
so I've, I've got some some of that brown there this graphite tint erasable yeah, yeah mostly you can erase some of that so let's have a look at doing um, so if I do this one oops not that one this this particular one with that so I need to go back here with my eraser and erase what I can of the blue because I want brown on this one here it's so hard to see and do because I've done brown there right there there and there this one will be brown It is, it's really awkward to work out where the squares are now. And that one. And this one then, because this will be diagonally. Right, yeah, that'll work, I think. That one. And then this one will also be the brown, because we're working diagonally. And then next door, we'll have the... blues in the squares I haven't added anything to yet how awkward is this right okay I've missed one of the browns there that's fine so blue there and here there'll be here there be blue not here there be dragons yeah and then this one will also be blue this is going to be a longer video than I anticipated, but it could be an interesting diversion here. So let's have a look and see how this works, because that's going to give some interesting... There we go, let's get some blue going there. I will have some brownie colour in there, look at these ones, and bl or bluey brownies mixed, because I... Um, made a mistake with which colour was where. So while I'm doing blues I'm going to stick with my brush. Just picking up water from time to time as it gets a little bit on the drier side. I'm actually adding a fair amount of water here. I can see where I've missed some corners with the blue but for now I'll live with that I think. Mostly. There's one here I haven't put blue in, which is fine, we can go and add it. And I've got blue here. So let me know what you think about this, because I'm not entirely sure yet myself. But let's have a look and see how this looks and if it's a possibility. A different way of filling colour in rather than using one colour. This is focusing on the individual fragments and pulling out those individual fragments rather than create a, it's creating an overall pattern but in a different way. So the original one is pulling out meta patterns, I suppose. Whereas this one is about pulling out the individual fragments side by side. Okay, let's do this. So we're doing the ones next door. This isn't going to be as good a job of um, washing out the colour, as it were. Activating the colour and spreading out evenly because um, I'm aware of time. But um, let's have a look. And I'm racing against the sun coming round because it is cr ever creeping closer to the work. So, as the sun does. Lovely though. I'm not sure how well this will work. I've chosen distinctly different colours. They're all part of the overall pattern, I suppose. But 
is it depends how far I want to take this alternating. It does add a different feel, doesn't it? It really does. So now I've cleaned my brush and I'm going to pop my brush back in its pot so it can dry. I hope you've enjoyed this look at fragments and the fact that I've actually put them into grids today and had a look at different ways and starting to look at ways of adding colour. This one would be fun to do with these alternating colours to bring out the fragments as well. Um, I guess it depends on how you want to do that. This one does actually look very confusing, but maybe that will change if I, you know, add black or add the other colours to it. But I think it could be an interesting kind of way of adding colour is that um, that, alt that change of things. There's other ways of doing it is by looking at how we could perhaps do alt, you know, I don't know. I'm not going there. My brain is fried on that for a moment. So I'd just like to thank you for joining me today. I hope you found this useful, interesting. If you have, please give a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please do. If you have subscribed, thank you so much. And I look forward to seeing you again, most probably tomorrow, with a project that could be mounted on a card or turned into a bookmark or something like that. So something to, I suppose, to make with your art instead of just leaving it in a sketchbook or whatever. Something you can gift to people or, you know, frame and put on display, which you could do with your art anyway. But as I mostly work in sketchbooks, um, there we go. So thank you. Take care for now and enjoy your day. Bye.